welcome uh, to my make do and mend uh, cold framing system um, it's not everybody has a poly tunnel or a wooden cold frame or uh, some fancy piece of kit to get your seeds starting um, I have managed to cobble together all sorts of crazy enough out of our barn all sorts of things that are broken or uh, just random random crap okay this is basically a lot of random crap um, so in here I've got one of my freezers broke down a while ago I've not got around to getting it to the dump so um, I've still got the, the freezer drawers and then I've got these polystyrene food trays I don't know if you can see these inside so these are like from polystyrene food trays which I put a soil in and then some seeds these ones are courgettes I've got some beetroots here that have been sprouting. I sowed those about 10 days ago. In here we've got cucumbers, but they've not actually germinated yet, but they need a little bit more heat. So what happens with these guys is, oh look, that one's just popping through. That's really exciting. Well, I think it's very exciting. Um, so what happens is during the day they're out here, I've found this lovely plastic lid. So I'm, I put this on here, magnifies the heat. Um, and then in the evening, obviously I'll take this off, and I'll bring this indoors. And this will actually stay indoors overnight. And then I'll bring it back out again during the day once the air temperature is warmer. So just this bit of plastic on the top will magnify the heat. And so it's just like it being in a polytunnel. This, this same, uh, same principle here, this is, this is, this is uh, make do and mend at its best. This is a bit of plastic. Um, wrapping from a delivery parcel and you can see how much moisture is underneath the plastic so that moisture um, from the air temperature during the day it will get hotter and as it cools down that condenses and then it keeps it nice and humid and inside we've got all these little seedlings now I sowed these about 10 days ago um, there's different varieties we've got some little uh, cherry tomatoes here and then there's some marmans here um, and there is um, there are aubergines, different varieties of aubergines going on here. I've actually quite densely sown these. Um, you really don't need to do one seed per individual pot like this. A lot of people do that. They use far too much potting compost, which is actually really expensive. So you can just do a bulk load of seed um, germination here. And then once these get a bit taller, uh, they'll become that you'll be able to prick them out and then you can put them into these little pots uh, and that way you save your soil so I'm just going to tuck this back over again okay let's say this one as well because tomatoes aubergines uh, cucumbers uh, they're all quite tender they don't like cold temperature so these guys all come in at night um, this I love this this is like a croissant box or a donut box this is like a little mini greenhouse in its own right. So you can see all the moisture building up in there, nice bit of humidity. Um, it's not actually germinated yet, but we've got some seeds going in there. I've got some loofah seeds going in there. They really like the heat. So but you can really feel the temperature difference. Um, oh yeah, we've got a little bit of germination going on there. Okay, so that's a lovely little thing. These guys come in at night. Uh, and then this, this is spinach. I've kept a little bit of the seed packet uh, into the seed tray so I know exactly what it is because I'm dreadful for just sowing lots of seeds and then forgetting to write things on them. So please write notes as to which seeds they are. Thankfully over the few years I've been doing this, um, I've, I actually recognize that that is a spinach plant, but it takes a little while to recognize all the different shapes of the leaves as they germinate through. Okay, so that's pretty much what's going on this table, and then we'll move over to this table. Okay, same principle on this table. Again, my freezer trays. Um, these make them really portable, nice and easy, so you can move them around. So if you don't have to bring them inside and outside um, while it's still cold at night, um, makes it very portable. I found some random plastic lids. Uh, I'm sure they belong to something at some point time which we no longer have um, but just you can see all the moisture in there uh, it keeps it nice and warm the air temperature underneath here is noticeably warmer uh, when that's on so I sewed these about again 10 days ago this is curly kale 
and you can see I've densely, really densely sowed the seeds. And then what I'll do, I will prick these out, which means to very gently lift them apart and put them into small pots to bring them on as individual plants. I may put two or three into a pot like this with some potting compost. Um, this is Ose, which is uh, part of the dock family, which is really nice aromatic um, leaf that can go into your salads. Uh, these are, oh yes, this is Burridge. Burridge is a really important plant in the vegetable garden because it actually is very beautiful and it attracts the bees and the bees are your pollinators. So you really actually want to have your pollinators in the vegetable garden just as much as your vegetable plants. Um, the two are like a symbiotic relationship so and they're really pretty and the other thing that we can do is you can harvest some of the flowers and put them in ice cubes and freeze them and so they're really pretty in your gin and tonic or something later on in the summer. Um, here we've got some chard so that's nice germinating here as well okay so that's what's going on in okay the... same principle here seeds in uh, germination is happening a little bit slower in this one these are beetroots going on in here oh actually that's the curly kale this one over here was nave which are turnips in English um, so again densely sown I've used um, old mushroom cartons I think when I have bought mushrooms in the supermarket they always come in these things I pierce a hole in the bottom um, I show you here so with a biro and I just hold on to the plastic here's the hole and then you've got some drainage because if you don't have any drainage the soil gets waterlogged and then the seeds will rot okay so that's really important make sure you have drainage holes in your make do and mend food container seed trays okay uh, this is a random thing again a bit of broken plastic very useful that can just go over the top there that can go over the top there. Seeds stay nice and warm. Okay, uh, so this is the next stage of my potting table. I've got these six containers again I've found. They're just garden containers. I've put carrots in here, I've got lettuce in here, and I've got coriander seeds in here. Um, I found a random piece of glass in my barn, which is probably from one of my many broken down cars over the years, and I do hate to throw away glass. Um, so at night time or during the day. I just put this over the top and it's okay that it's dirty. You don't want it perfectly clean because the dirt creates like um, a protection uh, from the direct sunlight. If it's too hot, it will just burn the seedlings. So this dirtiness is actually as good. It means it gets the magnification of the sun for the heat, but without the direct burning, um, which sun through glass would normally do on leaves, especially tender babies like the seedlings that will come through on this. Okay, so that's actually quite a useful little thing. Uh, so in here, this is the bottom of a broken guinea pig cage <laughs> from a previous part of our family life when we had guinea pigs. Um, again, meat, meat packing containers or mushroom containers. I've put holes in in the bottom, filled it with compost, put some seeds in. Uh, this one's some spinach. Uh, that's all spinach there. This is basil. So I've just taken some cuttings from a different, um, sorry it's not basil, that is sage uh, from a different uh, different plant. In here I've got coriander grains because I love coriander. You can never have too much coriander. A uh, random piece of glass probably from a broken window once upon a time which I found in the barn. So again I'm, I'm not very good at throwing away glass. Very useful. Um, so all, <laughs> all the time I've felt guilty or um, concerned that my barn is a real mess and I really ought to tidy it and, and there's too much junk and too much rubbish in there and everybody else lives a much cleaner organised life than me, I actually feel quite vindicated because I found all this crap from my barn uh, and actually it's, uh, it's, it's all coming in really useful now. Um, um, so I'm just going to show you how to do a little bit of um, seed sowing. I've got some, if you haven't got any pots or whatever, uh, I've got some random food, tr food trays again. And uh, I've got this great polystyrene box which I'm sure probably had some meat delivered in it at some point. Or, um, I'm not exactly sure, I can't remember. Anyway, it's been in my barn for 
quite some time. I knew it would be useful at some point, and there it is. So uh, it hasn't got any drainage holes, so with my fabulous Bic pen, which is a great dibber for making holes, I'm just going to stab it a few times and make some holes. Really important to make some drainage holes, otherwise your seeds get saturated and then they won't germinate. Okay, so I've got some nice holes. Exactly the same in my food tray here. I'm just going to make some in this one. Just a couple will do. Okay, and I've got some soil here. I've got a mixture of really, really good um, compost. Um, so it's still, it's old, it's old manure, but you can still see the straw in there. So it's not co totally rotted down. So I'm going to put that at the bottom because that will continue rotting over time and that will give nutrients to the rest of the soil. Okay, so I'm going to pop that in there and that's all in the bottom. And then my finer soil, this is, this is some compost from our compost heap. that in on top. Now if you're a perfectionist you'd have a garden sieve and you'd sieve any large stones or bits and pieces out. But I'm a bit of a no fuss gardener. I'm not a perfectionist. out don't want those now if you're growing something like beans or peas um, or carrots they don't actually need very nutritious soil beans and peas are self um, uh, self feeding so as they grow they create a little sack in the ground which will nourish the plant itself um, so you can put them into an area where you've got really poor soil same with carrots Carrots can even grow in sand, so um, they really don't need highly nutritious soil. Um, in the opposite way, if you're growing things like tomatoes, cucumbers, melons, pumpkins, any part of the pumpkin squash family, they're really greedy for nutrients, so they need really, really good soil. In fact, the best pumpkins I always get are the ones that uh, grow out of the compost heap directly in the compost. Okay, so I've got some soil here. I'm going to, I've got some beans, little dried green uh, French beans, and I'm going to just place them, maybe I'm going to do about 20 in this box, I've got double ones there. Maybe a few more than 20, 24 maybe. There you go. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of soil on over the top. Okay. So again, I'm not using very much of the really expensive potting compost. Just a little light dusting over the top. All the rest of the soil has just been dug up from the garden somewhere. So say these are beans. These are self-feeding, so they don't they don't need very nutritious soil. Water those in with my fabulous watering can. Slightly broken, but there you go. Still functions. Now these guys really need the heat to germinate. So it's a beautiful day today. It's nice and warm, but this evening is going to the temperature is going to change considerably. And at the end of this week, uh, what are we? There's something to be about the 25th of March. I've lost track of dates. Actually, I've got no idea where we are. Um, but we're somewhere, somewhere past the 23rd of March. I know that <laughs> we're not at the end of March, but we're somewhere in there. Um, I think today is 
Wednesday. Yeah, today's Wednesday. Friday, the forecast is it's going to be cold. It's about two degrees overnight. So these guys are really not going to like that, nor are my tomatoes, my pumpkins, my aubergines, um, my chilies um, that have all been so seeded. So they they have to come in overnight. Um, what I check uh, on the internet is a, a forecasting website called www.meteo.fr. Um, and you can put in your postcode and it can give you a 10 day forecast and it will give you te temperatures from the um, morning and evening. So you can see what the variation in temperature is going to be during the day. Um, it's a really good website. It, that, then it gives me an idea as to what I have to do over the next week um, and how to look after my plants in case it gets a bit cold. So really important, just remember, you've got to bring your tender plants in overnight. The rest, the, the rest of it can all stay out. The carrots, uh, the salad, uh, what else have we got? The the curly kale, the nave, they can all stay out. But it's your summer fruits, summer fruit vegetables, tomatoes, courgettes, uh, aubergines, cucumbers, pumpkin family, beans, all need to come in overnight. Um, and for this, uh, I haven't got a very exciting thing to put over the top. I've got a really broken, this is the best bit of broken plastic, really class. Uh, but that's still going to go over the top there, covers most of it, and that is still going to increase the temperature in order to help uh, germination. Okay, that's it for today. Bye! <laughs>